Greetings, Bouge RV is back with yet another new virtually indestructible fiberglass solar panel called the Arch Pro. The big difference with this newly updated Pro version is that it is based on the latest 16 bus bar N-type TopCon technology, typically reserved for top of the line glass panels, and sports a massive 28 bypass diodes inside for extreme, extreme shade, shade performance. performance. This is the same kind of anti-shading technology used in their best-selling UMA-SIGS panel that I shot a bunch of holes in back in 2023. But is this newer generation Arch Pro any good? Let's find out. Of course, we took the Arch Pro out to a secret location to shoot the shit out of it. Now, this is not a real gun. This is a Berna AR-15. It is a launcher. It actually launches, I believe it's 68 caliber pellets. Let me show you real quick. So these are what it fires, these gray hard balls. Now you can put tear gas in these, which makes them very effective against uh, zombies. And the reason why we're using this today instead of a real gun is I'm too lazy to take all this stuff to a range many miles away and set up in the mud. This thing should actually do pretty well at breaking this glass solar panel, like hail would at super high speed. So let's find out. Sights up. Now go ahead and take several shots at this glass solar panel. Let's see what happens. Yeah, so does a really good job at ruining that solar panel. In fact, it hit so hard, those pellets came back and got me a couple times. I would have to say that solar panel's destroyed. All right, let's do the same to the fiberglass Arch Pro. Let's give it the beans. There we go, 10 shots. It did do some damage. We're gonna find out how those 10 shots affected the solar output compared to a brand new untouched panel. Okay, first let's measure the solar incidence, which is gonna tell us how many watts per square meter we're getting today. Now there's a little bit of wispy clouds in the air and we just had two weeks of smoke in the air from fires, a little bit windy today. Let's go ahead and measure the solar incidence. Anything over 1000 watts per square meter is considered good. So there we are, we're about 1130. Now at this elevation, I usually get 1300 to 1350 on a perfect day. 1000 is what solar panels are rated at sea level. Okay, so here's our setup. I have two identical 200 watt Arch Pros. One's damaged, one is not. They are both angled exactly at the sun right now. I waited for this specific time of day to do this video so that I could use this picnic table to prop them up perfectly. So let's see what the output difference is between the two. I know it's very difficult to see in this bright sunlight, but it says 172 watts. That's what one panel is inputting. That's the undamaged panel. This power station is discharged to 37%, so it is nice and low. All right, I've now switched it to the damaged panel. Let's see what we got. All right, here we are. Amazingly, it's still outputting 108 watts, even though 10 sections of the panel are damaged. So let me show you this again. This is severe damage. This is something that would be way beyond hail damage. This may as well be bullet holes because those cells are completely destroyed. You could actually see the fiberglass underneath has shattered. That's severe damage. And that is 10 sections that are damaged. It's still outputting 108 watts. That's actually really good. Now, the reason this thing can still output is because it has 28 bypass diodes. It's just like a Bouge RVU Masig panel that I did a review on last year and I shot with an actual gun. That one I put six small holes in, it's still output almost normal. This one, the output's a lot lower, but I've done a lot more damage. I did 10 sections and the sections damaged are a lot bigger and a lot more spread out. Last time I shot in a straight line and that basically just knocks out the couple of the center pieces. This time I was a little more thorough and I shot more of the panel. I couldn't see this happening in any kind of situation getting this kind of damage, but I just wanna show you guys how resilient these panels actually are and still output lots of power. They do have hotspot prevention and the way they bypass hotspots is with the 28 bypass diodes. That's also what gives it excellent shade resistance and damage resilience. 
These can be bent up to 270 degrees. They weigh only eight pounds. They're IP68 waterproof, meaning they could be submerged underwater and still work. Because they're made of fiberglass, they have an insane temperature range from minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 185 degrees Fahrenheit. So those of you concerned about putting these on your vehicle or boat or cabin or whatever, and you live in Phoenix, where it's 120 degrees every day, your panels could be up to 160, 170, 180. These are absolutely fine, can handle the heat. They do not need an air gap, according to Bouge RV. They said you apply the sticky tape on the back or the adhesive or whatever you're gonna use. They do actually sell the adhesive, double-sided tape if you wanna use it. They say apply it directly to the roof and you're fine. And as for the warranty, it's a five-year manufacturer warranty, so you can't really beat that for a flex panel. As I said, we got some wispy clouds here today and a little bit of wind, so the solar conditions are not perfect. Well, let's go ahead and get a reading on this. All right, 167 watts. That's what we're getting right now. That's our baseline reading. This time of day, this elevation with these sky conditions. Okay, first test, we're gonna shade one corner. Okay, we're down to 143 watts. That's really good. Okay, now we're gonna shade two sections of the panel. So I don't know if you can see that, it says 133, 134. That's really good for two sections being shaded. So now we have sections on three of the four bus bar areas shaded. So one, two, three. Maybe this would be like a boom on a sailboat. And these, these basically simulate leaves or some kind of other obstruction that might be on your panel. So we have a lot of this panel shaded. Let's see what the output is. Amazingly, we're only down to 124. So 124 watts we're still getting and three of the four sections of this panel are shaded. That is just fantastic. First, I'll put the specs up on screen for those that wanna see that. As you can see here, the panel can be flexed up to 270 degrees. So it can be installed on gently curved surfaces. And because the panel can withstand up to 185 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, an air gap is actually not required for installation. Bouge does sell two-sided tape for the install direct to a non-porous surface like metal or treated fiberglass. For a mechanical install, the panel does include grommets built into the corners and in the middle. Now let's summarize the results of our testing. Solar irradiance was measured at 1130 watts per square meter at peak solar incidence. Sky conditions were clear with wispy high altitude clouds. Temperature was around 70 degrees Fahrenheit and the elevation is under 7,000 feet. Now our baseline panel that was pointing directly at the sun around 1 p.m. in the middle of November scored 172 out of a rated 200 watts or 86%. Now that is considered above average for a flex panel under these sky conditions at this time of year. I would expect the same panel would output about 185 to 190 in the middle of summer under perfect skies. The second panel, after taking 10 direct hits from a hard projectile traveling over 350 feet per second and causing severe damage to the panel, scored 108 watts. This is well in excess of any damage you could actually expect in the real world, like from hail. But we did this to test the bypass diode system, which obviously works perfectly. Assuming at least 10 to 12 cells were destroyed, that's about 20% of the surface, we saw approximately a 37% decrease in output from that damage. This makes sense since it has 28 bypass diodes or one for every pair of cells. So essentially, if you destroy or shade one cell, you're gonna lose the output from two. That's within margin of error of what we achieved in this test. The fact that a panel that suffered that much catastrophic damage still outputs over 63% of its original power is pretty amazing. Results of the shading of a single corner, which would represent like a leaf sitting on the panel or a similar amount of shading, reduced output from 172 down to 143 watts. A normal mono solar panel without multiple bypass diodes would output maybe 10 or 15 watts at best under these same conditions. Results of shading two different sections resulted in a drop from 172 down to 134. Results of shading three different sections reduced output from 172 down to 124. So even under the most severe shading, the panel still output 72% of its peak under these sky conditions, whereas a typical solar panel would be absolutely worthless. So what do I think about the Arch Pro? Well. I was actually very impressed by this product. I went into this test expecting anywhere from ho-hum to maybe half decent results, but they actually exceeded my expectations. Now I did kind of get carried away blasting the panel with 10 shots instead of just five or six, but I wanted to find out if this panel still output anything at all under such severe damage. 
A few of those shots actually penetrated the backing, leaving real holes all the way through the fiberglass. That is pretty tough. Even so, it still outputs an impressive 108 watts. Now, even shading three out of these four bus bar sections, we still saw 124 watt. Now, the first question I'm gonna get asked is, is the Yuma SIGS a better panel? Now, two years ago, I do believe the SIGS was the best panel for my RV, because I have tons of shading on my roof. On this little 25 footer, I have three vents, a big honking central mounted air conditioner, a fixed ladder, a radio antenna, and now I have a Starlink dish. So it doesn't matter what time of day, which way I'm parked, about half the roof gets shaded. And I have three 200 watt SIGs on my roof, and even when they're dirty, they output a ton of power. In the summer around noon, I get well over 500 watts, usually in the 550 range. In the winter with all the ridiculous shading, I get about 250, maybe 300. Literally half the panels are shaded almost all day in winter. It's still enough to keep the lights going and fridge running, but mm, literally nothing else. So I deploy about 800 to 1200 watts of ground panels that I can aim directly south to compensate. If I'm long-term boondocking in winter, as I will be for my upcoming quartzite trip in January, January during the big tent and RV show, I'll have plenty of power. So hopefully I'll see a few of you there. I still think the SIGS is generally a better panel. And I say this in quotes because it's only better due to its extreme flexibility, higher durability and super long warranty. But it's also twice the price of this new Arch Pro and performance is about the same. Where the SIGS is not better is in its much lower 17% efficiency, meaning it requires a lot more surface area to make the same 200 watts. And the 200 water is extremely thin and long. It's so long that a lot of folks have trouble fitting them on their roofs. The best thing for the SIGS is to get a pair of the shorter 100 watt version and parallel them together for better fitment if you can't fit that single 200 watt version. Now with the Arch Pro, that's less of an issue because it's more of a typical shape of a standard 200 watt flex panel, but this is actually a much shorter length. It also runs a higher voltage than both the SIGs and original 200 watt Arch that I reviewed earlier this year. That's because N-type Topcon solar panels are basically the peak of available consumer technology right now. And I just bought a bunch of glass panels from my property that uses the same technology. The amount of power that you get per square foot is almost twice as much as it was when I did my van build back eight years ago. That 100 watt glass panel that I destroyed earlier was actually one of the ones that I used to use for my ground deployment back in the day. When I picked that thing up, I'm like, size and weight wise, I thought it was like maybe a 180 watt panel. Nope, 100 watts. Well, the times have changed. So to answer the question, if you need super flexibility and you're gonna be walking on the panels all the time or getting them like beat up by tree branches or something extreme, go for the six. It's worth the extra money. That is assuming you have the space and budget for them. Otherwise, get this new Arch Pro. It's just much more efficient use of space and almost as durable with the same bypass diode technology as the six. It's also half the price, meaning you can buy twice as many for the same bucks. You can still walk on these, but since they have a hard glazed surface, you're gonna have no traction if they're wet and you're wearing shoes and you'll just end up slipping and falling off the roof. So if you install these on a boat, I suggest going barefoot if you walk on them and these are IP68 waterproof, so they can be submerged for up to 30 minutes. Now, if they're submerged for longer than that, then you obviously have a much more serious issue on board to deal with. Product price. Bouge is currently selling this 200 watt version of the Arch Pro for 269, but you know as a viewer of Hobotech, you're never gonna pay that. Using the link and exclusive code provided in the description, the final hobo price for the 200 watt version is only 239 and for the 100 watt version, 135. Yep, that is over a buck a watt for a flex panel, but it's also a state of the art, ultra durable fiberglass panel with a five year warranty and technology that makes them far more efficient than just about anything else on the market for its size and ability to hold up under fire during the next zombie apocalypse. So if you're interested, the link and discount code is gonna be in the description of this video below. I'm also gonna put a link here across the bottom of the screen, along with a QR code that you can scan if you're watching me on TV that'll take you on over to the Bouge RV store page where you can check out the new Arch Pro. Thanks for watching and until next time. Commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box.